Discover solutions to issues that affect your family and professional life with practical information to help you get past life's adversities. Take a proactive approach to power up your life with Rosalie's expert resources. According to South Florida Water Management studies, nitrate levels are rising in many local bodies of water due to homeowners applying fertilizer incorrectly, which results in nitrogen leaking into our groundwater and robbing oxygen from our fish. One of our greatest resources to inspire our green thumb are Florida Public Gardens. Paul James, the Gardener Guy, HGTV Gardening by the Yard, joins us with simple and easy ways to start planning how you can transform your yard into a beautiful garden. Good morning, Paul. Hello, Rose. Florida has eight beautiful public gardens. Tell us why we here in Florida are so fortunate. Well, you know, you're one of the states that has so many. Unfortunately, there are some states that don't have any at all those poor folks but you within a few hours drive um, pretty much in any direction you're going to be able to find a public garden uh, Fairchild Tropical Botanic Gardens is a fabulous place uh, to see tropicals of all kinds and you know all of them regardless of the ones you go visit all offer so much in the way of ideas and inspiration for gardeners so how can we take some of the beautiful different species we'll see at a public garden and try to emulate that look at home you know, what you need to do is first, what I suggest people do is take a big stroll first through the garden. Don't, don't really work on the details too much. Then go back and look at areas that may mimic a situation you have in your own backyard. Maybe you've got a mature tree where there's a lot of deep shade below and you've really had trouble trying to figure out how to get something to grow under the shade tree. Chances are you're gonna find a solution at a public garden because they have so many displays that really do mimic some quadrant, some little corner in your own yard. So we need to know where the sun hits a specific area. Oh, absolutely. Which, you know, just you, you take a stroll throughout the day and observe and see where that sun is. And you know, in, in your area, that sun can be pretty intense. So even plants that are rated for full sun may still struggle at the end of the day just because it's so hot and the sun is so bright in Florida. So how do we know what kind of fertilizer to put down on our lawn? There's so many different kinds. It can be a challenge. My suggestion is rely on compost instead. Compost, whether you make it at home or you buy it store-bought in bags, um, really has in a slow release form, all those wonderful nutrients, the major nutrients, as well as the micronutrients. And it's just a wonderful way to simultaneously provide nutrients to the plants and amend the soil. So where can we get more information, Paul? Go to nationalpublicgardensday.org. So consider taking a day trip and visit one of your Florida public gardens in your region. What better time than now to give our outdoor spaces a fresh new look? Or go organic by planting a garden to grow fresh veggies, or just enjoy your patio area to play and relax in style. John Gidding, nationally recognized expert and designer on HGTV's Curb Appeal, joins us to share some summer tips on how to make the most of your outdoor living and entertaining spaces. Good morning, John. Hi, Rosalie. That was by far the best introduction ever. Well, thank you. And now you're going to introduce new outdoor design trends. Yes, I've been looking at trends this year, and one thing I'm really noticing is reflective surfaces. Container plantings have always been a big deal, especially with backyards, but I'm finding that mixing and matching the old terracotta stuff with some newer shiny containers is definitely the way to go. I'm seeing a huge trend like that this year. So what are some of the biggest mistakes homeowners make when designing their outdoor space? One thing I've noticed is people tend to think of their backyard as one space. It's my backyard, and they'll usually have one sort of set of furniture out there, but I try to break it up into a couple different spaces. It usually ends up being a lot more amenable to pulling people out of the house and being able to use these tiny vignettes. So if you've got seating in one area, lounging in another, maybe eating in a third, it's a nice way of breaking up the entire backyard so it doesn't have to be this one big imposing space, but a couple smaller spaces and lighting it appropriately 
fleet is also a big way of appreciating them as well. So small solar panels, style lighting can be great, maybe some pendants, wherever you can find some opportunities for lighting, I say embrace them. Give us some simple tips to make the most of our outdoor space. Once you've brought furniture outdoors, one of the simplest things I tell people to do is embrace outdoor fabrics, even if it just means an outdoor rug and a couple cushions. Outdoor fabrics have taken huge steps forward, so they don't lose their color over time. They're very, very all-weather resistant, and that includes both regular fabrics for things like cushions and woven plastics and things that people are using for outdoor rugs. It's a great way of bringing the indoor out. All the personality that you've got in the inside of your home, you should try to bring outside as well, and you'll find that it just extends how much livability you've got in your own property. The bugs are out in full force now. Any tips on staying bite free when enjoying our outdoor space? I do. After you've spent all this time making your gorgeous patio pretty, you need to be able to spend time out there. And for me, it's not about the chemically uh, creams that you rub on yourself. So I'm really recommending misters and repellers. Um, Terminix has a line of them out right now called All Clear, and they're all natural. They're safe around food, they're safe around kids, and they come in a variety of scales as well. There's one that clips onto your belt, or there's a bigger one they can leave in your backyard and it mists it all day long. And they repel 95% of mosquitoes. Incidences of West Nile have really increased lately, and I think it's a good thing just to stay away from these pesky critters. And uh, um, Terminix's line of misters and repellers do a great job. Where can we find more outdoor ideas and new trends for this summer? Terminix.com slash mosquito. You'll find tips and tricks for outdoor design as well as how to keep the pesky bugs away. Thanks, John, and have a happy summer. Thank you, Rosalie. You too. Summer fun includes many family gatherings or an annual family reunion with your siblings and their kids or simply inviting everyone to your home for a family barbecue. But you're concerned about an ongoing family feud that may spring up and spoil all your summer fun. Joining us this morning is Daniel Post Senning, the great-great-grandson of etiquette pioneer Emily Post and author of Manners in a Digital World, Living Well Online. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Rose. It's good to be with you. What is the proper approach to ask your siblings to share the cost of a family reunion or a family party when everyone has various incomes? Oftentimes, when we're out to have summer fun, to, to reconnect with the people that matter most to us, it, it takes us outside of our usual routines. And particularly when we get together with family, the tendency is to fall into the roles that we're familiar with in those family situations. So maybe it's the brother that picked on you and you feel a little insecure around him or the parent that you used to talk back to. But now you're an adult and you're, you're all getting together and you play new roles. And I like to say that this is a place where traditional etiquette can really serve as a guide for appropriate behavior. And etiquette's all about growing and sustaining and building relationships. So those, those traditional roles can really facilitate the relationships we're in today. And those traditional roles are host, guest, or if you're a participant in a joint venture. And, and those roles are really going to give you a clue whether it's your responsibility to, to, be, to be welcoming people and greeting people or whether you're a guest who's supposed to be maybe bringing a little house gift and minimizing your impact or whether it's a negotiated joint venture where everyone's going to take their share of the expenses and the responsibility for planning and for cleanup afterwards. What are the top five tips of minimizing family flare-ups? Keep the focus on fun. This is about reconnecting with the people that really matter to us. So I like to say put a smile on your face and some patience in your heart because you're going to encounter some situations where you're just going to be waiting for somebody, not because they're holding you up, but just because you're with a group of people and, 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 and a little patience is going to go a long way. The other thing that can help is setting clear expectations ahead of time. And in this, this modern world that we live in, one of the challenges that everybody's facing is new technology and navigating new technology, particularly summer where the focus is meant to be on the good times that we're having and that cell phone can be such a distraction it can draw us away from the people that we're with and setting some digital house rules before everyone gets together can be a great place to start to build that sense of community so I like to talk about carving out some time that's a, a, a no digital devices or screen time time and, and oftentimes the dinner table is a place that everyone can agree we're going to put those devices away but I also like to remind spouses that you know if you use your phone to free you from work to, to, to get away from the office to really allow that freedom to, to, to be a, a, a reality in your life so you set clear expectations with your office about times to communicate back and 
um, what, what, what's a reasonable time of day even to reach you or to expect a reply. That can really help to, to set those boundaries and to make some clear spaces where people know that their attention is going to be on each other and on the relationships that they're growing and building. What's the most common family faux pas and how can we avoid them? The biggest faux pas, the, the, the thing that we hear the most about at the Emily Post Institute is when somebody in the family feels taken advantage of. Like they do all the planning, they do all the work, they cover all the expenses. And maybe it is that the, the brother that makes more than everybody else in the family, or maybe it's the, the parent that's used to being that provider role or playing that provider role for everybody. It can be really nice as the, as the roles are shifting and as, as families are meeting as adults and introducing their children to each other. That, that they learn how to play those adult roles really responsibly. And the, the, the biggest part is handling those practical realities of life, paying your share of the expenses, uh, and doing your share of the chores. L look to people's roles and strengths. If you've uh, appointed somebody the cook and someone the photographer, that's great. But also be sure that the photographer gets into the pictures occasionally. What are the top mobile manners for smartphones? The number one mobile manner for me with a smartphone in your hand or your pocket or even in your backpack is to be sure that you're giving your attention to the people that you're with. You hear about it all the time. I was out at dinner with someone and they were distracted. I met a friend for the first time in a long time and they were taking calls all afternoon while we were together. Really giving your attention to the person that you're with. Being careful about captive audiences. So that's the, the people in the checkout line with you, the people in the elevator or the bathroom, or frankly, even the plane or the subway car. That's a place where you might want to text instead of taking a call because it's really disruptive to the people around you. How do we maneuver through the digital world with good manners? When you're in a social media environment or an email environment, or even if you're instant messaging with someone, when you're using these new forms of communication, that, that digital brick wall can really put a barrier between people. Remind yourself about the relationship that's being served by the communication. So if you're talking to a grandmother or something, maybe that's a phone call, not an email relationship. If you're talking to your teen, maybe texting is a great way to get in touch with them. But really put the communication in service of the relationship. Thanks, Daniel, for sharing with our viewers how to instill good manners in a digital era. Rose, it's a pleasure to be with you. People can find out more at emilypost.com or bankofamerica.com. How we use our phones in the digital world and how they reflect our personality can also end up being a technology don't. Here with suggestions on how to get a technology makeover is celebrity stylist Robert Verdi who met up with a mom and a son and offered a free makeover. How are you, Rosalie? So what does a cell phone really tell you about a person's personality? Well, really what the phone is, it's the epicenter of your life. It really is an extension of everything about you. So it's where you keep all of your information. It's clearly where you connect with the world. And it's really important that that place be very highly organized, incredibly, incredibly useful to you and your lifestyle. And people forget about that, which is why I ambushed people in Union Square Park to actually give them a technology makeover. Take a look at this. That's good. That's I'm taking a before moment. picture of you. Hi. What? My name is Robert. I'm a stylist. And oh. I want to give you a digital makeover. I want to take your digital world and make it easy. <laughs> What's a digital makeover? I'm going to get you new phones, new phone accessories. I'm going to make your life, which happens on your cell phone, so much easier. Oh Are you God. in? Yeah. So you see, Rosalie, in a traditional makeover, you expect like this big change, but they look great, and here they are in the <laughs> studio with us, Anne and Mike. And the change we're making for them is in their digital life. So here's the technology turnabout for them. Anne had a flip phone, if you can imagine, which is a total liability for, for Mike, for her son. Because like when I was a kid growing up, my mom had a 1968 Dodge Polara, and I made her drop me off a few blocks from school so the kids wouldn't see. <laughs> so, so I'm saving Mike the embarrassment of the flip phone coming out. And here you go, a brand new bright white shiny wow. Nokia Lumia 521. It's a prepaid phone available at Walmart, $129, no long-term commitment. And you can go to the marketplace and add all the apps that you want to customize the phone. But I took a jump start, added Pinterest, because I understand you're redecorating your home. I am, yeah. So you can follow your Pinterest boards. And I also added Pandora, because I understand you're a music buff. 
I love the nautical look for this season, so here's a little reflection of the nautical style for you in a wristlet. Yeah. You can keep your cash, yeah. your cards, and your phone with you at all times. So that's a little thing for you. And, oh, look at this, Anne. I got you this headset, so here you plug it into the side of the phone. And now you can call Mike five minutes after his curfew and torture him oh, and find great. out where he is. How's that for you, that's Mike? That's excellent. Now I got you the same phone, Mike, and I added a couple of things that I think you'll be very happy about. Hulu Plus, because I understand oh. you're TV buff, so you can watch yes. TV here. And I added, guess what, can you see it? Xbox. Because your mom told me um, that you're a little bit of a, a gamer. A little bit. A little bit. And here's a great stand for you so that when you are watching TV, you can just prop it right up there. It's oh, very easy. Oh, and so cool. I got you these great headsets. I opened them and took them out of the box because I wanted to show everybody how great this is. They zip. If you can imagine, these zip. And wow. that makes it much easier for you to not tangle them. So. These are your new digital lives. Where can we find more personal technology tips? Facebook.com forward slash Windows Phone. You'll find some more tips. Summertime is party time. Whether it's a casual family dinner, a block party, or a beachside barbecue, the devil really is in the details and not the deviled eggs. So to keep the party hot, Entertaining expert Sissy Biggers is here this morning with some quick and easy ideas on how to spice up your next barbecue. Good morning, Sissy. Good morning to you, Rosalie. And now in your beautiful part of the country, you can barbecue all year long. So maybe I should reposition it. This is a time to reorganize your barbecuing tools and your whole method because it really is the season when we're going to be taking advantage of, of the long days. So this is a way to, to get you started with the details and the deviled eggs. I love that. What is the key ingredient to successful entertaining? Start by organizing, and then being a very food-centric person that I am, Rosalie, I have to remind myself to then think about the drinks, because it's something that sometimes is an afterthought for me, but it's the first thing you offer your guests. But now you can brew right over ice and get all that wonderful flavor of Snapples without having all those cumbersome bottles. In an under a minute, your guests can have their own wonderful, whether it's peach, lemon, or the raspberry Snapple. So look for those, find them right there in the grocery Aisle. How can we present our food and drinks and get the best party planner's attention? You know, the, as I said, the secret to the best party planner is that behind the scenes thing. So one way to look hot and when you entertain is making sure that all the stuff you're going to be working with outdoors, Rosalie, is cool and cold. So with the LG French door refrigerator, they now have a new feature, Rosalie, which I think is a real aha. It's a door in door compartment. And you can now just open a single section of your LG and then right there you can reveal all just the things you need for your barbecue. You've got your condiments right there on the door. There's your watermelon. Close that right up. And that way you're not using all that energy and then open it up and you still have that same French door capacity of the LG refrigerator. So keeping your condiments and your dips and everything cool till the last minute is crucial to your entertaining. And by the way, when someone says, what can I do? You say, go to the door and door compartment in the refrigerator and pull out the condiments for me rather than having them dig through your refrigerator, which we know is a highly personalized experience. And how about carting all that stuff from the kitchen to the party area? When it gets to making that move from the kitchen to the table, to me it's all about lightweight, durable, and now really stylish plastics. How do we compliment our guests about one of their favorite dishes so they bring it? You know, Rosalie, I usually actually start with that tip because in my house, I oh, when they say, what can I bring? I always have an exact answer because there's nothing worse to say to someone who's really willing to bring something. So if you say, oh, oh, no, don't bother or whatever. No, be very specific and say, you know what would be really great? Some potato salad or how about that famous macaroni and tuna salad that you do every year at fireworks? Just be very specific. They are flattered and they bring it and everybody enjoys it. And then, by the way, it's a small competition once they get there. Where can we find more summer entertaining tips? Videopump.tv. Happy summer, Rosalie. And happy summer to you, sissy. <music> summer is the perfect time to shop for a home in Florida as home prices rise at the fastest pace in six years. And home purchases are up nearly 50%. 
Here to help educate buyers is Michael Copley, retail lending expert at TD Bank. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Rosalie. Nice to, nice to hear from you this morning. So what is the purpose of the Mortgage Survey Index? The, the purpose really is to find out what is going on at the consumer level during the home purchase experience with a specific set of focus on the financing element of that, Rosalie, and the, both the positive and negative elements of the consumer's experience, not just in buying the home, but also when they apply for their mortgage. Because ultimately what we're trying to find out is what t is the quality of service that the customers expect and what can we do as an institution to improve our own execution and help those in the industry understand how those elements can help them as well. So what are some highlights of the survey? Well, the great thing about the survey is that almost 70% of the people had a positive experience with their lender. And of that 70%, 80% cite their satisfaction with their lender to be excellent, specifically around things like responsiveness, accessibility, and transparency and honesty, um, which in this entire, con uh, in, the, in the purchase money, um, world, that trust and confidence is probably one of the most important elements to ensuring that the customer has a great experience. The second thing that's kind of interesting here is that the findings were that only 47% of the consumers shopped just two lenders when they were looking for their mortgage, and that came from no relationship that they had with those banks. So 47% of the customers got their mortgage where they didn't even have a relationship um, with their institution, and only 34% of the surveyed customers got their mortgage from their relationship bank, which we found quite interesting and just points out how competitive the mortgage business is and the consumer's choices to go where they can get the best product and the best price and the best service. So what did the survey indicate about the latest home buying trends in Florida? Well, in Florida, in South Florida particularly, the market, frankly, has had double-digit growth for the past several months. And even in the condo markets, we're seeing lots of strength there. Um, for us at TD, our construction lending program is doing quite well, um, where we hear from the competition that theirs is not doing quite as well. So we're very happy with all elements of the, of the Florida marketplace for us at TD. Um, the other thing that's exciting about this is from a consumer sentiment perspective, confidence is really at an all-time high. Um, consumer confidence is up in the, in, at its highest uh, peak since the last five years. And as it relates to where the market is today, 90% of the customers that have been surveyed indicate that the market will stay the same or even improve. And in the next 12 months, almost 35% of those surveyed intend to buy a home. So that combination of confidence plus historically low interest rates could, could be a tremendous opportunity for the, for the market at large. Thanks, Michael, for sharing Florida's sunny forecast as home purchases increase. You bet, Rosalie. Thank you. Florida is a perfect location for movies and TV shows. According to the Greater Fort Lauderdale Film Commission, shows like The Glades continue to flourish and increase workforce development in Florida's film and television industry, bringing in more than $3.7 million in only two months of work. The Glades' overall economic impact of Florida is over $17.8 million. Joining us this morning is Matt Passmore, star of The Glades, with some great reasons why he enjoys work and play in Florida. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. How has Florida influenced your role on the show in playing your character, Detective Jim Longworth? Florida is everything to the show. It's the antagonist, it's the protagonist, it's the heat, it's the culture, it's, um, you know, the very, the very nature of Florida, that uh, not all of what you see is what you get. You scratch the surface and there's always, there's always something else. It's, it's an absurd place. It's uh, such a beautiful place. Um, the, 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 the show really wouldn't exist without Florida. South Florida is one of the main locations of the show, right? Yeah, Miami, um, Broward County. Uh, the, playing, in, playing the FDLE, we can pretty much go everywhere. So. Uh, episodes base themselves pretty much the, uh, ent with the entire range of, um, of Florida, whether it be up near Tampa or in, in the rural part, Lake Okeechobee, all those, 
all those different places and certainly along the beaches and uh, uh, mansions, hotels, all that sort of stuff. How exciting it must be for you to know the success of the show equates into jobs for Florida. TV production work, front, behind the scenes, the restaurant industry, hotel industry. For the past four years, I have pretty much spent six months in Florida and six months back in um, LA. So I've, I've gotten to know, I've certainly got to know the Broward County area uh, very well. I think I've put a couple of bar owners' kids through college, um, <laughs> as our whole crew has. Um, yeah, I, 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 we, we, get, we get treated very well. I can see that the, the local businesses uh, love the fact that we're here and around. There's, there's transport companies, catering companies. It, um, uh, the law enforcement have, have really embraced this as well. So it's, it's definitely be, been one of the, the joys and, and one of, definitely one of the pros is um, to be able to spend so much time down here. What's the most challenging aspect of your job while shooting in Florida? The most challenging aspect has always been the heat. Um, and I don't mean the incredible basketball team. Um, it's, uh, we, we've always filmed in the summertime, so it's always been pretty brutal um, temperature wise on us. This season was a little bit different because we started earlier. So um, the, the most challenging aspect of the show uh, for me are the lines. Jim loves to talk, so that's, that's what I do. I learn lines. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they, the production often has to find locations for each of our stories. So um, I think for them, it becomes about finding locations, working with uh, law enforcement and with the counties um, as to, to, to find places to shoot. And um, they've been very good at that. And the other, the other great thing about doing this show is I just get to find out so much about Florida, whether it be the world of highlight, the shot girl culture, uh, Civil War reenactments. Um, we've done so much. The ghost stories of Florida. Um, yeah, the marinas. It, 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 we, they literally just base a certain uh, a homicide or our case around a different part of Florida. And, um, and, and it becomes, uh, the audience experiences that through Jim's eyes. And that's, that's the best thing about playing Jim is because I'm an Australian and didn't know anything about uh, Florida except for Scarface before I came down here. So um, it's great because I'm literally discovering it all myself as well. Thanks, Matt, and best of luck for continued success on the Glades. No worries. Thank you very much. Florida is full of great adventures like our public gardens or create your own outdoor space to relax with the family because now you can consider to buy the home of your dreams. As home values are going up, you'll get more for yours. Make some time for family get-togethers and practice your digital manners. Florida's economy is growing stronger every day, and that includes our TV and film industry because nothing is more naturally beautiful or unique as the many attractions of Florida. Share with us your plans to discover Florida this summer at rosalieartershow.com and happy summer. Will the solutions to this show's issues help you or a loved one? Find shows like this and others on our website at rosalieartershow.com.